Arit, quick draft's been out for a few days now. I thought I'd have a look at some of the stats to see what the bots are doing, what the archetypes are looking like, and see if there's any differences to normal. I have been using 17 lands. You've got the um, the card evaluations here, and if we have a look in here, you also have the color performance ratings. If you go into the right settings on here, so you can see how we're doing. Uh, but I wanted to compare these to what we're getting in the Premier Draft. So made a little spreadsheet as I do, and thought I'd share what is going on. So we can see here the Quick Draft win rates and the played, uh, the Premier Draft win rates. So I'm, I'm only in a Premier Draft. I haven't put the best of threes on here. Uh, I thought I'd compare best of one for best of one. And then I've done a little bit of a comparison down here. So we can see quite quickly that Golgari has got a, quite a good uh, 2.6 percentage points in increase on the win rate compared to uh, Premier Draft. And to be honest, I've felt this a little bit. I've done two quick drafts. One was uh, Golgari. I'm currently 6-2 with that one. And in my first one, I played a... Oh, I can't even remember what I drafted the first time. Uh, but... In my first one, I uh, lost all three of my games to Golgari decks, I think. So uh, they do seem to be quite good anecdotally with my limited experience so far. Um, the uncommons, I think, are getting picked relatively low. We'll look at the pick rates in a moment. So I think this is an important, uh, well, fairly important thing to look at. Big losers, we've got is it and Boros, but both of these aren't really big players. You can see they've both had sub-1,000 games played. Uh, whereas things like Rakdos, which is one of the better uh, ones, it's the best one in, in Premier Draft by a decent amount, uh, but that's had 5,000 games played. Another thing to look at is that Azorius has gone from being an okay deck to looks like the best deck by a substantial margin here, actually. Uh, you're looking at 0 0.9 percentage points above Rakdos, uh, and we've also got Gruul up there as well. So these two uh, seem to have uh, jumped up a little bit. Selesnia is just as bad as it was. Simic, uh, I looked at this at the weekend actually, Simic was, was really good at the time, it's dropped back to kind of a mediocre level, but it's not quite the bad level it was looking at, but this could be because there's so few of these getting played, that it's only getting played when it's really, really good, when you've got those broken mythics and uh, rares to go with it, so I think that's something to look out for, but yeah, Golgari does seem to be quite good, um, Ozarv seems pretty much the same, and I'm, I'm just pointing that out because when we look at the individual card evaluations... Uh, if we look at the average last, last seen at values, so the average last seen at tells us how much cards have been picked. And the one card in the commons and uncommons which has been picked above everything else is Heron of Hope. So Heron of Hope is really, really important, uh, or it's, it's a very, very strong player in the black-white life gain decks, in the Ozov life gain decks. But it's been picked above any other any other common or uncommon. This common has been picked above every uncommon by the bots. Uh, you rarely see in the past pack two. So I think that's an important thing to think about when you're drafting these black white decks is that Heron of Hope is going to be picked by the bots really really high, and you're unlikely to see any of them at all. So this is the one where it uh, gains you one extra life. It's two three five for three, and if you gain life, you gain that much life plus one, and you give it a life link, and it's it's a pretty strong card. It's a really good rule player. Uh, other cards are picked highly parasitic grasp which is quite good uh we've got angelic quartermaster which isn't too unsurprising that's quite a good card and we don't really have any other big surprises in this uh this early stage here you've got the fell stinger here but these all kind of seem about right if i go down the bottom uh ooh, uh you've got crushing calories the the card that's most likely to wheel or at least the the common run common that's most likely to wheel. And I think that's an okay card. I'm quite happy to play one in... Well, probably just one in my green decks. But there's definitely cards I would play below that. Uh, there's other little bits and pieces here. Um, but actually, what will be more useful to look at is if we sort by this column here. So what I've done is... If you look, watch my last video. It was a uh, measure to see how under or overpicked a card was. So we see right here, uh, Distract and Geist is picked really highly by the bots but it has a really low win rate so this is one which is overpicked by the bots uh if we look at cards which are underpicked by the bots so wash away massive might wedding invitation nurturing presence these are picked quite low by the bots so you've seen them very late in the pack these are kind of looking around the wheel point when invitation less so but when invitation has a really high win rate 
and uh, you know you're looking at things with decent win rates here, but are going quite a decent way around the, the pack. So uh, we've got Wash Away, Massive Might, Wedding Invitation, Nurture and Presence, Cradle of Safety. Uh, this was one of the more underpicked cards at one point. It is changing quite quickly a lot, um, but we'll have a few cards which have been underpicked here, Wedding Invitation being the big one. So you can expect your Wedding Invitation to wheel. I don't think I'd really want more than one of these, so that's possibly something quite to um, pay attention to. We do seem to have a lot of green and blue cards which are being underpicked here, but again, that could be because of how often the scene play. Um, so if we look at the games in hand, so you know this wash away, it's only been seen in hand 322 times. And I did have to take off some cards which didn't have a game in hand win rate because they were seen in hand so low. Uh, when Invitation is another one which is, hasn't been seen in hand very much, but that might be just be because players aren't picking them enough. Uh, another one here, Sanguine Statuette. Uh, I think, you know, this is a black-red gold card, a secret gold card, so that's possibly why it's here. Um, Brian Coma is, well, it's it's quite a, it's, it's a really high win rate. It's the uh, most underpicked, um, the most underpicked gold card here. So, the most underpicked, um, what do I call them, the signpost uncommons. And that actually could go hand-in-hand hand with why the quick draft win rate is uh, the so high for Azorius here. So let's actually have a quick look at, uh, if we go back to just the under, not the under overpick, the average last seen at. And have a look at these two card cards. So Chadl Pack is the one which has been picked the highest. Then we've got Sigardian Paladin, Wandering Mind. These are all getting picked up quite high actually. And I think that's quite important. Sigardian Paladin, I don't think it's great. Uh, I think Child of the Pack's really good, and that's getting picked really, really high, so you're not going to see many of them going around. Then we've got Markov Purifier, uh, Blood Tithe Harvester, which is one of the best cards in the set. Uh, so yeah, this looks like the, the second best win rate um, uncommon, or common or uncommon here. Uh, I have to have a look at the, the top one. Oh, top one is Markov Retribution. Uh, hmm, fair enough. I didn't realise it would be that, but that's pr pretty interesting. No... Uh, so we've got more of Purifier, the one we're just talking about. The Skull Scab is, is at this point here, so that's 60th most highly picked. So these are actually getting picked quite high. Um, these are getting picked relatively high. Brian Coomer, uh, Brian Coomer. I always think Brian Coomer, a guy called Brian Coomer. But Brian Coomer here is uh, the 73rd most picked, common or uncommon. Ancient Lumbernaut is 82. The Panic Bystander is at... 101. Can't even think what that card. White black. Okay. Um and that is it. So the Panic Bystand is the uh bottom one at about hundred out of the ones that were ranking here, 166. There was a, I think there was another 20 or so which I, I deleted off, probably not, not quite that much, 15 or so, because they didn't have any data associated with them, so it was thrown off the, the data a little bit. But this black this uh Lumenot might be coming solo, might be why uh, things are go are going so well, so I just thought it was quite interesting. A little look at some of the cards which are being picked over and under, under amount. Oh, wow. Did I just see Heroes Downfall is being picked really low? Wow. That's incredible. Um, why is this getting picked? Uh, like, why is this being left four or five picks in? Five picks in here. Yeah, that should be like the second card of our pack, surely. Uh, no, normally, surely. 16th best uh, win rate. In, yeah, so that there. Uh, expect to see quite a few Heroes Downfalls. And looking at the, the removal as well is actually going to be. Uh, kind of tell them, you know, if your quick draft decks are going to have more removal in them because the bots aren't picking removal, then that's going to affect how your creatures are going to play out. So I think that's it's quite an interesting thing uh, to look at as well. But yeah, so I thought it was quite interesting to look at. We've got, this is changing day by day. I've, I've had my eye on it for a couple of days, but I thought I'd share where we are now on the 30th of November uh, just to see what we're looking at. If you enjoy the video, obviously a subscription is always, always appreciated. Uh, we're getting really close at 200 and I really like to hit it uh, quite quickly. Actually, another stretch goal is in the next month I want to get a 250. I've got a couple tricks up my sleeve to try and get myself there. I will be doing a video on the top draft formats of the year. I'll be ranking that my top 10. I can probably come up with 10 for this year. I did last year and it was good fun. And we'll be having some more fun. Hopefully there'll be some nice holiday cubes and stuff coming up as well, which we're going to have a place. So... Uh, love to see you again in the channel if it's your first time. If it's not your first time, thank you for coming back and I'll catch you again soon.